Okay, walk with me for a little bit. We'll have a little chat. I'm gonna go dig up some May apples and um, just talk to you about some of the stuff going on today. Obviously, the world's still going crazy. And um, I just had some things I wanted to share. So the other day I got a phone call and um, it was my dad and my dad was letting me know that because he worked, he's, he's here in the small town that we live in now. They moved out of the city like, like we did, took them some years, but they got out <laughs> and come over here and pick up the shovel. So we're going to need that. Anyway, oh, there's some deer out there in the, oh no, those are the sheep. I thought that was the deer. Those are sheep out there in the field. They're going around the mountain. So we have a path that goes around the mountain. I'll show you that. And the deer, when we let them out every day, they come running up from their keepings down there. And they come flying up into this field up here. And they take that path, which is right over, out, over there. And they run around the mountain. And that takes them over to some new pasture on the other side of the mountain. The mountain peak is up that right there up there somewhere it's about 2400 feet elevation 300 feet shy of the tallest mountain in arkansas anyway so they follow around that path and they come back to this field and they graze and they just switch back and forth between a number of different pastures so anyway i got a phone call my dad he said uh the public schools freezers have gone out and they're no longer working and we got to get rid of a bunch of meat and so they had the public school had called a bunch of food banks and said hey we got all this meat would you like it and all the food banks said yes and so they came and got it or dispersed it to different places but my dad called me and said hey well we've got about 240 pounds six cases of this hamburger patties that they they're, they're they're determining that it's freezer burnt he said probably it's really not but that's what they said it was freezer burnt and so they can't feed actually you know give it away to food banks because there's you know health inspectors and all kinds of other bureaucratic nonsense would you like it to, you know to feed it to your animals feed it to your chickens i said absolutely if it's freezer burnt you know my chickens would love it. So, you know, they don't care if it's freezer burnt. Chickens will eat anything. So anyway, we come over, we unload it in the freezer, pack it all into the freezers that we have here, solar powered freezers because we're off the grid. And um, I think this is probably a good spot. So anyway, we get them all packed in and they leave and I go back the next day and I look at, you know, go through the meat and I'm looking at the meat and I'm reading the labels to it and it's all a bunch of soy. It is beef. It says beef, but it's not 100% beef. It's like beef with soy protein, hydrolyzed soy protein, natural flavors, MSG, all this stuff. <laughs> like... Sodium carbonate, is that some sort of baking soda salt? I don't know what that is. Anyway, all this stuff in there, I'm like, I don't want this. I don't want to, I don't want, I wouldn't eat it. I wouldn't even feed it to my animals. I wouldn't even feed it to my chickens. <laughs> Soy, if you don't know, is all genetically modified in this country. 99% um, of soy made in this country is genetically modified. And um, you can thank monsanto for that but all that to say all the other stuff in there i don't even i haven't even looked up what hydrolyzed soy is what what is that leave a comment below if you know but anyway my point being i would not feed this to my kids i would not feed this to my chickens let alone my kids but this is what they're eating in the public school system this is what's going on in the public schools. And it's like, do I need yet another reason to not send my kids to the public schools and to homeschool my kids? If this is what they're going to be feeding them, let's, let's get you ready early on young in age for your man boobs, all those men out there. 
anyway, all that to say, uh, I saw that. And about the time I saw that, I saw this. It was uh, published. I think it was an article. It was linked over to Twitter, and it was um, from the Wall Street Journal. And the guy who published published this link over at the Wall Street or on Twitter from the Wall Street Journal, and of course the Wall Street Journal stuff was behind a paywall, so I didn't click on that to see it. But what was interesting is the guy who posted it on Twitter noticed what was in the corner of the photo, and it was the grading scale, the grading scale that was in the corner of the photo. And now it looks like to be an A student, you have to score an eighty between an eighty and a hundred. Now, I don't know about you, but you let me know in the comments. What was an A student when you went to school? When I went to school, an A student was 92 to 100. Okay, if you got below a 92, that was a B. And an F, to score an F, you had to get between like 0 to 65. And then like, so if you got below a 65, I believe that was an F. So a 64 was an F. A 65 was like a D minus. I believe that's how it went. So you tell me how it was for you. But this goes back to my point. The grading scale has been adjusted and the bar has been set so low that it's, it's ridiculous how, how kids are performing. I can hear the sheep already coming back from this pathway. So the sheep, that's the entrance of the field over there. I can already hear them coming back around. And they went down this path that way you can probably hear them too and they circled the entire mountain which is the mountain tops up there and now they've come back around the other side <laughs> it's like they do a lap to get their morning exercise i don't feel also you can hear that humming can you hear that that's the cicadas coming out in fact the cicadas have been coming out since i was picking morel mushrooms about a month ago you could see the little holes now this is a this is a sheep that got separated. So she's she's coming down the path, and she's like, "Where is everybody? Did they go? Did they already, did they already make their lap? You can come on. It's okay." <laughs> she's like, "Where is everybody? I don't know. Where are they? Where are they? I don't know. You'll have to go find them." So there, now she's going to go down. She's going to get back on the path and go around the mountain. There she goes. Okay, so here's what we're out here for today. Um, these may apples. So these are the may apples. And what we're doing is we're making a tincture that will help treat. I'm, cause I'm, I'm building a tincture library right now, okay? And I'm going through the list of things I really want to get. And I've mentioned before, mosquitoes, I think, are the number one killer of everything throughout history and so i'm like you know what i think it'd be good nice it'd be just a nice thing to have to have a malaria tincture something to treat malaria malaria if you don't know is a parasite okay it's not bacterial it's not viral it's a parasite and so you have to get anti-parasitic stuff and mayapple is one of those things and what you do is you dig up the roots so let's go ahead and do that now, I don't want to dig right there because if you know what that plant is, it's going to cause me a whole bunch of heartache and pain. So I'm after the roots of this guy right here, but I don't want to touch that plant. And the roots, I mean, the roots will give you just as much pain and torment as the leaves will. So this is not a good place to dig your mayapples. I want to show you what a mayapple looks like. If I can find one here, I'll show you in just a second. So this is the actual mayapple, if you can see that. Now, this is a very young one, so it's not very big, but it'll get about the size of maybe, well, it's a little bit smaller than a golf ball, I think, okay? But that one, that's what that will grow into. But usually the deer will find them long before you do, um, especially when they're ripe, uh, but they'll probably chew them off beforehand. Anyway, um, this is what it looks like when a mayapple did not pollinate. It just kind of dies right there. So that one eventually just fall off. Didn't didn't uh, pollinate itself correctly. If I can get that to focus. But anyway, I'm gonna see if I can. This might be a good place to dig because I don't see any poison ivy here. So and this one didn't pollinate, so I'll just go ahead and dig that one up, and I'll show you the root structure of the plants we're looking for.
And while I got this up, I can show you all this mycelium right here. This is mycelium. This is what makes mushroom. I'm not sure what kind of mycelium it is, but that's what that is. And then as you dig down here, this is what we're after. This is the root. Whew. Okay, look at all that. So this is a rhizome, meaning it spreads by rhizomes. So right there is the new shoot for the next year. And so that will grow into another may apple and it'll send up rhizomes every so often like there's a nodule right there if you can see that little white piece that'll turn into a rhizome nodule and then let's see what else we got here there's some more root right there but that one's kind of basically broken but i'll take this one wash it off get a bunch more like it and then um that'll be good that'll be the roots we need for our may apple tincture Oh look, it's an airsoft bullet. You can tell the kids have been out here. So this is a really good example right here. So you can see how the root structure works. When you walk along the forest and you see these may apples, you may see one there and then one there, but you don't realize there's an entire root structure underneath of that. And it's a rhizome network where it just sends a runner. And every year that run gets longer and longer. So this is the end of the run and it's just gonna keep shooting out and then popping up new ones. Uh, you know for the next year, but this is what you're after right there You're looking for all that root structure and whatever structure is attached uh, underneath there um, But uh, you don't need this all you need is the roots and that's what we're going to be Basically submerging into vodka and getting all the medicinals out of so that's what you want right there So back to the reason why I homeschool There's no standards. There's no standards to hold anybody to account for how well they perform in school, their academics. And that's not getting them ready for life. If they have such low standards in school, they're not going to be able to succeed. And all that's going to do is condition these kids to... Oh, there's the sheepies. All that's going to do is condition these kids to not be able to perform... When they get out in real life and it's going to make them dependent on someone else, i.e. the government, to make sure that they have whatever they need in life to continue to propagate the problem. What do you think? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What an amazing time to be living. Again, if you have standards for your kids, all you're doing is ensuring their success if you hold those standards high. And uh, I do, I try to keep mine high. I demand excellence from my kids. So, all right. Hey, check out our merchandise over at teespring.com. You can find our stupid shit hurt shirt. If we had more hurt in this world, we'd have an awful, awful lot less <laughs> people in the public school systems. <laughs> but it doesn't hurt right now. There's a lot that doesn't hurt. All right, guys. Love you all. See you next time in the homestead. Bye. This is Grandma. Grandma survived the Great Depression. She survived the Great Depression because her supply chain was local and she knew how to do stuff. Grandma was smart. Grandma told us to make do with what you got. She also said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Homesteading is all about self-reliance and declaring ourselves to be independent from the system. We grow our own food, we raise our own animals, and doing these things help safeguard our families from the unpredictable world that surrounds us. But what about banking? I love being my own power company, but what about being my own bank? Right now, our country is over $30 trillion in debt and rising. The Fed keeps printing money and the Congress won't stop spending money. Staying attached to the modern banking system and their investment vehicles is like putting all of your eggs in one very, very fragile basket. On one side, you have the threat of inflation and your savings value floating away. And the other side is a possible deflationary stock market collapse, just like what happened in the 1930s. Genesis Gold Group is like a basket holding eggs, and these eggs are impossible to break. History shows us that all paper investments have and will return to their intrinsic value eventually. Zero. But gold, silver, and other precious metals have never, ever been worthless. In every collapse throughout history, people have turned back to precious metals to find monetary value. If you have a 401k, an IRA, or a savings account where you're literally watching the purchasing power inflate away, give Genesis Gold Group a call right now today, this instant. 
they can develop a strategy for you in the days ahead. I can tell you how I raise sheep, I can tell you how I raise chickens, or the best way to grow tomatoes, or how to hook up a solar panel. But Genesis Gold Group is your best shot at safeguarding your hard-earned savings and investments during this increasingly turbulent time in history. The link and phone number is in the description below, or visit their website at genesisgoldgroup.com. And be sure to say you heard about them from an American homestead. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait.